Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little black subscribe button at the bottom of your screen, go ahead, click that black subscribe button. Really does help our audience grow, really does help our channel grow, really does help and mean more than you could possibly know. So go ahead, hit that little black subscribe button. Also, thank you to our presenting sponsor, Betfred Sportsbook and the Betfred Sportsbook app. Bet 50 on any game, get 250 in free bets. Thank you again to Betfred. Thank you again to you. Now, here is the video that you came here for. You want to switch gears, and, and I want to talk about what was actually probably the biggest story in all of sports on Tuesday. Obviously, the, the realignment stuff is huge. That's why we led the show with it. There's a lot of layers to it. But beyond that, Tuesday was a very important day in, in the really the entire sports ecosystem because it was the day of the 2023 NBA draft lottery. Now, I think it's worth noting that it's not really about the draft lottery, but instead what the prize is at the top of this NBA draft. That is because, of course, the 2023 NBA draft features Victor Wenbanyama, who I think most people kind of know is regarded as literally at worst the best prospect since LeBron James. And some say, I saw Adrian Wojnarowski say this, that he might be the most coveted prospect in the history of team sports. Seven foot five center, big, tall, athletic, can shoot, can handle the ball, best defensive player on the floor. And somebody was going to get the rights to draft him. The top five, Detroit, Houston, Charlotte, San Antonio, and Portland. And it is, drum roll please, the San Antonio Spurs, who have earned the right to draft Victor Wenbanyama, number one overall at the upcoming NBA draft. So let's talk about it. Let's break it down because I think there's actually a lot to discuss, but I'm going to start not really in the place that I planned on because I, I figured if the Pistons got him or the Hornets got him, whatever. But because it's the Spurs, oh, we got to talk about that because listen, you talk about the luck of the Irish. How about the luck of the Spur? San Antonio in its organization's history has won three NBA draft lotteries. First of all, that's not bad. The draft lottery started in 1985, so we're going on year 38. They have won one out of essentially every 10 and a half or so of them. That's not bad. It's especially not bad considering that they very rarely drafted in the lottery, but it's also not bad because for the third time, they win the draft lottery in a year where there is a generational talent at center. 1987. David Robinson is coming out of Navy. David Robinson turns into an NBA 10-time all All-Star, an Olympian, an NBA MVP in 1995, and oh, by the way, helped the San Antonio Spurs to multiple NBA championships. Oh, how about this? A decade later, 1997. No big deal, but I would argue the best big man prospect since, you know, Victor Wenbanyama might be the best big man prospect since 1997 when... Tim Duncan was available in the draft. If I remember correctly, the Celtics ended up with two of the top six picks, but it was the San Antonio Spurs, who, by the way, had one bad year because David Robinson got hurt, who ended up winning the draft lottery. And so now, so now, 26 years after winning the Tim Duncan lottery to win, win the Victor Wenbanyama lottery, I can't think of a better stroke of luck anywhere than that, and I'll also say this, that retirement home that Greg Popovich was planning on, uh, you know, maybe passing his time in over these next couple of years, I can't imagine this guy is going anywhere. And from the Spurs perspective, let me say this, is that we're going to get into some of the positives and negatives of Wenbanyama, okay, in a minute. But I am happy that a generational prospect is getting to go to a well-run organization. Let me explain. Bottom line is, listen, we know how the draft is structured. And the truth is, is that like most of the time, the reason a team is picking in the lottery is because they're dysfunctional, bad ownership, bad front office, bad GM, bad, whatever. Okay. And so there are so many great prospects through the years that just never got into the right situation or got drafted by the wrong place and had to, you know, LeBron James, you could criticize him for whatever, but Cleveland was dysfunctional. He had to leave. To, 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 to reach his ultimate goals to then come back to leave Cleveland to a championship. Anthony Davis, they never found the second star for him in New Orleans. He ends up having to leave. 
you know, football, we see it all the time with these quarterbacks that just get put in bad situations. They never have a real chance to succeed. So for Wenbanyama to go to a well-run organization with good, smart people in the front office, a Hall of Fame head coach, I think that's a great, great, great situation for him. And I think it will best allow him to reach his potential in a way that, let's be honest, if he had gone to Houston, which is a mess right now, if he had gone to Charlotte, which frankly hasn't been relevant in forever, it's just a different deal. At the same time, though, I I do want to say this. And what I want to say is pretty straightforward, is that while a couple things, one, I am by no means rooting against Victor Wenbanyama. I am by no means rooting for the worst for Victor Wenbanyama. I do think we have to have an honest conversation because while I do think, I, I, I do understand the concept of why he is as highly regarded and as can't miss as possible. I think we also have to look at the history of the NBA the current context of the NBA and ask if this guy is like really going to reach his potential. Now, on the one hand, if he reaches his potential, I mean, we're talking about all time. Great. As I said a minute ago, seven foot five, and that's not hyperbole. Jonathan Gavoni from ESPN spent time with him in France in the winter and said he measured seven foot four without shoes, seven foot five with shoes, seven foot five can handle the ball, can shoot the ball, good distributor, elite defensive player and he it isn't hyperbole to say he does stuff that has never been done on the floor before i've seen video i've seen highlights of him missing a three-point shot running in and taking two steps grabbing it and dunking it out of midair he isn't he has the chance to be an elite rim protector and i don't again i don't think it's hyperbole to say like if it clicks right situation which it appears to be with san antonio Injury, whatever, you're able to avoid major injuries. You're able to develop and add weight and do what you need to do. I mean, this guy could be a seven foot five Giannis that's a better three point shooter. I mean, think about that. Add like six inches to Giannis, plus allow him to shoot threes. That is what Victor Wimbanyama's upside is. I guess my concern, and I do think it's worth discussing, is like, is it really realistic to think that Victor Wimbanyama is going to reach that upside? And again, I want to be clear I'm not rooting against him. I don't want to see him fail. I certainly don't want to see any injuries. But if we're going to have a big boy conversation about Victor Wenbanyama, we have to talk facts. And the facts are that you go throughout history, there really isn't an example of a guy his size coming into the league at his age and having a long, fruitful career in which he reaches his full potential. There have been seven footers, different guys, whatever. But most of them... Unfortunately, it does not work out, and, and a lot of it has to do with injuries. For for you know, for the sake of this argument, I will say your boy Torres actually did a little bit of homework last t- today. And it is shocking to see like like some of the guys that we consider the big, you know, the the, the guy, the bigger guys, the, the 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 centers that have dealt with injuries. When you look through their careers, it's shocking how short-lived just it, it doesn't work out well. Okay. I, here's some research that I did throughout the day on Tuesday, knowing that I was going to be talking about Victor Wimbanyama tonight. Okay. So Yao Ming, how about this? Yao Ming, seven foot five, number one pick in the 2002 NBA draft played under 500 games in his career after the age of 25. And he didn't come to the NBA until he was 21 years old. So after the age of 25, he played more than 60 games just once in his career. And he came three years later than when Banyama's come or two years later, at least after 25 played 60 games, just once Greg Oden played more than 60 games. Once in his career was out of the NBA by 26 bill Walton best season came at 25 years old. And remember he played four years of college basketball. He came into the league at 22 years old. His best season was 25 Never, he played, uh, he was never the same after about 25, 26. Ralph Sampson, very similar. Missed three games total his first three years. Never played more than 50 games after his first three years and was out of league by 31. Chris Stapps Porzingis, who's seven foot three. Most games played was his rookie year. Although on a positive note, he did play 65 games this year. So I'm going in a lot of different directions. But I guess what I would just say, is that while I get the hype 
and I'm certainly not saying San Antonio should trade the pick or draft somebody else. What I am saying is there really is no historical precedent for a guy this big staying this healthy for this long. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong, but I have to have an honest conversation about the Victor Wembanyama situation. Beyond that, and this is something else I was thinking about. All those guys, they all played in the pre-load management era. Now, I think a lot of people would say, well, load management might have helped Yao Ming, might have helped Greg Oden. Maybe it would have, maybe it wouldn't have. But I think you can argue it's the exact opposite. I think if you can argue, you're expecting a seven foot five guy in this era of NBA basketball with load management. What is realistic to expect him to play? Because we know with his body and his frame and his this and his that. Like the second anything goes wrong, you're going to shut him down for a week, 10 days, two weeks, two months. I know it's a completely different situation. But when Zion Williamson gets hurt, he misses months at a time. And I know he's he's probably the opposite of when Banyama, he, he's carrying too much weight. But again, it's the thought of the team doctors being overly concerned, the team doctors being overly careful. And so what is the ceiling when you have Victor Wenbanyama? Like how many games is realistic in this era of the NBA? I think in a good year, you're looking at 60 because that's about what the stars play. And in a bad year, you're looking at much, much, much less. So it'll be interesting to see. Now I will say the positive is one good organization, as I said, two, when Binyama has been working with these doctors for years to put himself in the best position to have a long, long NBA career, uh, if you read the Gavoni piece, they did a very lengthy uh, write-up about his stretching routine, and he does these extensive stretches without shoes on to start the game. So I'm rooting for this kid. I am. This isn't an anti-Victor Wenbanyama thing. I do think it's worth asking, though, can he stay healthy over an NBA career and all that good stuff? I will say, by the way, we are going to start doing NBA draft profiles on the College Hoops Daily podcast feed uh, with Aaron Torres Sports Media. So for people who don't know, uh, I own my own media company, Aaron Torres Media. We have another show called the College Hoops Daily. It's hosted by a kid named Zach Kroll, young, hungry college hoops writer. We'll be doing profiles of all the major NBA draft prospects starting later this week with Victor Wembanyama. So I encourage you to follow the College Hoops Daily podcast, subscribe, we will be previewing all the big players in the draft. Wen Benyama, Brandon Miller, Anthony Black, Kaysen Wallace, Scoot Henderson, the Thompson Twins, etc. A lot of NBA draft coverage coming your way.